As a black person, I resent those officers having to come in here and stand over people in their uniform. That is a slap in this community's face. You are creating for this board a very nasty image in this community. They are building a bomb here in Columbus. That's my former client, Jerry Doyle, a First Amendment protester, and he also produced a publication called On the Columbus Plantation. I always won for him on the criminal side and good results on the civil side. But the bigger issue here, and we're going to see it you know, replicated you know, 15 years later now in uh, New Hampshire, is um, it just an unlawful oppression toward the First Amendment. Karen, Kelly, Di, Dennis, and Ryan, John, you guys stepped in it. See you in court. Let me understand this, officer. I want to get it clear, okay? Are there other media inside? Now, the thing that you need to be clear about is that you're not going inside. I you're ask you a simple question, officer. I'm not being rude or loud. I ask you a simple question. Are there media inside? I see there is media inside. Now, I'm being denied the right to go inside. Did, 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 did they read the opinion yesterday from Attorney William uh, Chapman that was in the paper? Okay. Make sure people can get in and out. Oh, people can get in and out. I'm not okay, blocking good. anybody here, very officer. Good. Very good. Very I'm going to ask you once again, for about the third time, are other media inside? Yes, it's a yes or no question, officer. Fisher, correct. Yeah. Officer? Yeah, it's very unfortunate if the plaintiff has decides to use this in some kind of, uh, you know, put it up on the or whatever. But, you know, that's where you live in a free... I don't need to hear from you, sir. All right, look it. I didn't care for his temperament in addressing me, and other people have agreed with me, including like <laughs> the judicial reviewing board. So, but that's not really the issue. I couldn't care less what he thinks about me, and he couldn't care less what I think about him. The law is the law, and I'm going to show it to you right here. Now, of course, three years ago, uh, I threatened to sue the school board over a similarly restrictive speech uh, issue, and Alderman T. Boom got up with me, and then there you have City Attorney Bennett agreeing with us after we forced their hand. Now, this year I come back with, you know, press credentials and a mayoral commendation, and it's like, you know, what do you want from me? Well, what you want me to do is to go away, but I'm not going to because I don't have to. This is America. Now, as a result of the shenanigans brought forth by school board president Mary Jo Kilroy that you are about to see, what I did was I initiated a lawsuit on behalf of Jerry Doyle and made sure to pass it off to John Waddy before I left Columbus, Ohio. And as you can see, we were correct there as well. Okay, what we're about to review here is uh, Hillsborough District Judge Robert Lynn, who can't stand me issuing an order that I'm allowed to run video in his courtroom and place it on the internet. Now, I don't need him to like me. All I need him to do is to follow the law, and that's what he did. So I suspect that if this case reaches him now with regard to the GOP threatening to arrest me at public events where the public is invited, uh, I think he will look at the facts and also look at the fact that Kelly Ayotte has treated me as a journalist on prior occasion when providing me with uh, the Franconia shooting incident media materials. I think he will look at all of that in a larger context and see that I was not creating a disturbance or causing a riot or inciting to riot or anything of that nature, and he will rule accordingly. And if he doesn't, then you know I'm left to say that you know New Hampshire is a crying joke when it comes to the First Amendment. So either way, I win. Let's take a look at the vintage footage here from KingCast.net. We've got some from the 2006 and we've got some from uh, 1999 when Mary Jo Kilroy used to threaten us at the school board. Yeah, it, it, it's very unfortunate if the plaintiff has decides to, to use this in some kind of, uh, you know, put it up on the lawn or whatever, but, you know, that's 
unfortunate if the plaintiff has decides to, to use this in some kind of, uh, you know, put it up on blogs or whatever. But, you know, that's where you live in a free... I don't need to hear from you, sir. You live in a free society, and that means that you have to put up with some nonsense. That's the way, that's the way a free society works. When they don't want to listen to the people, they ignore the people. Turn off the microphone, shut down meetings. Members of the audience, I caution you, do not interrupt this meeting with shouting or outbursts. What are you going to do, Merge? You have everybody arrested. This is becoming very annoying how we are treating and responding to the public. This is my fourth time speaking before the school board on issues concerning children being abused in the Columbus Public Schools. It appears that this district does not take the concerns and the needs of the students seriously. All the time, people come up here in support for people who are speaking, yeah. and nothing Mr. ever happens. King. I'm simply asking the school if they would forward that to me so that we don't have to go to the role. Mr. King, the issue is you're blocking the aisle. We're going to have the clear aisle. The issue is maybe this is going to be the new policy. We want to run an orderly, respectful, and civil meeting, Mrs. Heard. If you look around, you'll see that our children are being denied a quality education and they're being abused, and when parents complain, they're lied on and punished by corrupt administration. As a black person, I resent those officers having to come in here and stand over people in their uniform. That is a slap in this community's face. You are creating for this board a very nasty image in this community. They are building a bomb here in Columbus. I mean, because you obviously just feel that this is a joke. Parents come down here, they complain all the time, and you do nothing. So why don't you address something? And you see how that dovetails with the fact that in Nashua, a couple of years ago, Attorney Bennett was compelled to agree with me uh, and Alderman Teboom when we argued that the, there was restrictive, unconstitutionally restrictive speech policies at the school board that were brought in by that idiot, oh, what was her name, uh, Julia Earle from Texas. In any event, uh, I was right then and I'm right now. So I just can't wait for the litigation. It's going to be a blast. Okay, so now we're going to watch a little vintage King cast footage from 1999, another First Amendment criminal defense case for Jerry Doyle. Prevailed on that case in a four-day trial. And at the end of the trial, you'll see Michael Israel there, another First Amendment criminal defense case for him that I won. And we went on and sued the police department. They were a little bit upset that he said they were racist, so they kind of gave him a little beat down in the... Uh, detention in the holding room uh, after they pulled him over for no reason in front of his mother's civic award-winning garden we went on there the Ohio Court of Claims found that those officers had made Mr. Israel a victim of violent crime I believe that was the first time anyone had ever done that in Ohio so you know yeah I know a little bit about the First Amendment and its uh, reaches Almost every case you find that I worked that is a major case to me has First Amendment implications. Where do I start with Jerry Doyle? Patriot. Mr. Doyle protested the fact that City Council had decided that it would pay for police protection for the Ku Klux Klan. I was laughed at other attorneys, and when I say City Council, attorneys did not want to go against the city, city hall. But had to ask Mr. Doyle to leave, and Mr. Doyle said, no, I'm not leaving. We won the criminal trial after four days. The prosecutor in that case refused to shake my hand. Michael Israel, <laughs> we became great friends. I see a young man vigorously trying to stand up for truth, justice, and the so-called American way. 
we were on the cutting edge of First Amendment law there as well. After one of Jerry Doyle's cases, he goes off and you see him singing in, this, in the same vein of the Negro spirituals of the 1960s. Brother Israel, have you got any comments? Give God the glory.